right? Okay. <coughs> well, we face a very anxious wait for the town of uh, Gundawindi today as the, w- the waters continue to rise and head, uh, make their way to the levee bank that uh, surrounds the town of Gundawindi. We now, uh, we now have con- can confirm that Gundawindi is headed for a record ever flood. Uh, it is, according to the Bureau, likely uh, to be at least, 10, at least 10.85 metres, and the levee bank is 11 metres. Uh, the Bureau uh, believes there is a possibility that it could go beyond the 10.85 metres. Uh, so as a precaution, we, as I said last night, have airlifted patients from the hospital and the nursing home, 62 altogether, into hospitals around the region. Low-lying homes are evacuated to evacuation centres last night, about 100 people now in an evacuation centre in Gundawindi. We've also pre-positioning an emergency uh, management Queensland helicopter uh, in, the, uh, in Gundawindi from 9am this morning as a precaution. The time of the peak in Gundawindi will be uh, mid to late afternoon today, so we will know uh, how those levee banks stand up to the task in front of them. Can I say, though, that I share some of the confidence of the Mayor of Gundawindi that uh, this levee is a very strong levee. This town is very well prepared for this event. Uh, To the great credit of the Council, they've maintained their levee very well. Uh, they've also done a great job of uh, advising their whole town of what's uh, of the situation. They've issued two SMS alerts uh, and they've been putting out regular media releases. Uh, they've had to in the bush you have to overcome things and apparently last night as they put out went to put out one media release a bat flew into uh, electricity supply and cut it temporarily but they got it back on and despite the bat uh, the people of Gundawindi have been well informed of the circumstances uh, that they face. So We'll be thinking about the people of Gundawindi today. We've seen the terrible havoc that these waters have caused in little towns and major cities right across our state. Uh, So I'm sure that there'll be a number of people in Gundawindi today uh, very worried. Uh, Can I say we are watching and with with as much precision as possible, uh, working to keep you and your town safe. Uh, In the uh, town of Condamine, we can now confirm that they will see the waters peak over the weekend. Uh, It will be uh, slightly less than the one that they got uh, a week ago, but it will be the second largest uh, flood on record in Condamine, and it's a very good thing that those people have evacuated. Here in Brisbane, we are now starting to see the water drop out of our river systems and start to leave the suburbs uh, around Brisbane and Ipswich. Uh, that means, of course, that the clean-up can, is beginning and many people uh, today, tomorrow and uh, over the next few days will be starting to go back into their homes and their suburbs for the first time. Anybody who's seen some of the images this morning of what they'll be coming into in some of those places will know that uh, there is a lot of uh, heartache and grief as people start to see for the first time uh, what has happened to their homes and their streets. In this incident, we don't have just one or two homes in a street affected. In some cases, we have street after street after street where every home has been inundated to the roof level, affecting thousands, not hundreds, but thousands of people across the Brisbane and Ipswich area. Uh, So obviously, the more help that we can get out there and give them with the clean-up, the better. And I encourage people, please, make an effort to help your neighbours, help your friends, help your family. Uh, And there are many uh, efforts now being made to coordinate volunteers. And I encourage you to get on to the various hotlines or websites if you can. The Wyvernhoe Dam uh, will continue to see managed and controlled releases out of that dam. We're currently releasing water out of Wyvernhoe at the rate of 3,500 cubic metres per second and will continue to do so over the next five or six days, uh, depending on if we have any other big rainfall events. But in the absence of that, uh, we'll continue releasing at that level. It's a relatively high level, but we're doing that because next Friday... Brisbane uh, will see a king tide. So we will see the height of the river rise next Friday as a result of a king tide. And uh, we're wanting to release that water out of Wyvernhoe so that when the king tide comes, we can hold back on the water that's coming that we would be releasing. So there's a lot of planning going into the next six or seven days in managing the Wyvernhoe system and making sure that we're ready to 
bring the <coughs> throttle back, if you like, uh, as the king tide has its effect on the river uh, volumes. But all throughout that release, it is being carefully calculated so that the release, uh, the maximum height of uh, the water during that release will stay within the banks of the river system. So it will continue in some parts of the river system to be very close to the top of the bank, but uh, will not breach the bank. Uh, there are a number of parts of uh, Brisbane that have been isolated now for a number of days, both in terms of electricity supply and cut-off uh, from roads, particularly out in the Mogul area, the Mount Crosby, uh, Karana Downs, uh, Belbarry area. Uh, overnight, the Australian Defence uh, went in with uh, heavy-duty vehicles into across flooded creeks with, uh, with eight pallets of food and supplies, and they will make uh, further trips today with 17, a further 17 pallets of food and supplies supplies uh, and will continue to do so until those roads are open. Uh, into those regions we're prioritising, we know th the importance of getting those roads open. There will be some issues but that's uh, a high priority area. Uh, I'll come back to uh, some of the um, broader issues around electricity and water in a moment but uh, just in a couple of other places, just so everyone gets a sense that uh, while things are happening here in the capital city there's a whole lot of issues happening right across the state. In Dhirumbandi, the floodwaters that came through the southwest system for most of last, uh, the last two weeks have now hit Dhirumbandi. Uh, Dhirumbandi has uh, not been flooded, but it is now completely isolated and all roads to Dhirumbandi have been cut. Those uh, floodwaters will now sit and keep Dhirumbandi cut well, possibly well into February. So the supply, uh, the supply focus is now uh, also on Dhirumbandi and we are working uh, to ensure that they have the supplies they need throughout that event. Into the Lockyer Valley, uh, the search will continue today across an area of more than 200 kilometres uh, for those people who continue to be missing. Uh, I'm, I, today I'll be visiting Grantham, uh, myself and the Prime Minister uh, will be visiting the town of Grantham. Uh, I look forward to having the chance to, uh, to meet with some of the people in this area, which without doubt Grantham has been the town out of all of the 70 that have been affected in one way or another by this uh, event. Grantham is at the absolute epicentre of the damage that this has caused. So I look forward to visiting the people of Grantham today with the Prime Minister and also having the chance to thank uh, those emergency workers who are in there uh, in the most uh, difficult clean-up job and, uh, and emotional circumstances, I uh, think, of any that we are facing. Uh, we know that there are similar places in the valley at Murphy's Creek, uh, in and around a, a number of those smaller areas having similar high levels of damage, and all of them are working hard to get uh, their towns functional as quickly as possible. Uh, on that note, uh, across the Lockyer Valley, uh, more than half of those who have been without electricity supply have now been supplied, and we expect to see another 2,000 taking it to almost full supply, uh, other than those places that are very damaged into the Lockyer Valley uh, today. Uh, in Ipswich, uh, we also see the waters now uh, washing out of the Ipswich uh, city. Uh, we still have more than 900 people uh, in evacuation centres. We're working very hard to see the Ipswich motorway open at least to traffic tra travelling east from this afternoon and then traffic travelling west uh, this, over the weekend. There are engineering assessments happening right now on the Ipswich motorway at, while it is being cleaned with a view to having it operational and open this afternoon. It's a very important arterial road and for those people who have been cut off in Ipswich, we are doing our best to have that road open for you today. Across both Ipswich and Brisbane, uh, we are very carefully monitoring the water balance. We do have some damage to the water treatment plant at Mount Crosby and that means that we, uh, we, while we've got full supply at the moment, we do expect to see a peak or a spike when we see the flood clean-up begin. So we're watching that very, very carefully and there's some modelling being done this morning to ensure that if we need to supplement that supply in some way that we're prepared to do it. In terms of uh, transport, uh, can I say a couple of things? Firstly, we're also working to have the busway systems open today, so uh, hopefully that will help people get uh, around. Uh, the um, Central Queensland coal uh, rail network is also the focus of a great deal of work now by, uh, by rail authorities. This is critical to get that supply chain fully functional. So in addition to all of the roads and uh, networks uh, here in the southeast, uh, the coal supply chain is being... Uh, 
with a lot of focus over the next uh, few days. Can I say in relation to uh, travel around the South East, the advice uh, that we're now getting from police is that people have over the last couple of days heeded the warnings and stayed home if they didn't need to travel. As we start to see the water recede, this morning we've seen a lot of traffic on our roads. We still have a significant number of uh, traffic signals uh, disconnected and out. So our police are out there at significant points in the road network uh, directing traffic. But that does take a lot of police resources and I would really ask those people who do not need to be travelling, <laughs> I know how interested people are to get out and about and have a look, can I really implore you, it's actually quite dangerous on our roads out there at the moment. We are looking to get that traffic management system as fully operational as quickly as we can. Uh, but uh, as you'll appreciate, there are other issues that we're also putting first. That's getting people's homes reconnected so they can get back home as quickly as they can. On a, another related uh, transport issue, the uh, Maritime Safety Queensland has made a request to the Australian Defence Force for a minesweeper uh, to go into Moreton Bay and start the process of survey surveying Moreton Bay for all of the debris that we've watched coming down the river, the pontoons, the freezers, uh, the the broken boats, uh, all of that material that we've watched uh, in awe as it floated down the river, uh, most of that is ending up in Moreton Bay and uh, the minesweeper will help us to identify where it is and then help to determine what uh, kinds of salvage operations might be undertaken where necessary. Uh, I think you, with all of that you start to get a sense of the scale of the operation that we're still conducting right across Queensland and the very many issues that we have to grapple with uh, here in uh, both uh, Ipswich and uh, Brisbane and into the Lockyer Valley. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, our emergency workers and our police are still out there on the front line managing an emergency response. We are still uh, in the process of getting our cities of Ipswich and Brisbane operational and trying to get them up and running. The CBD is largely operational, but there are still 10 buildings without power, uh, and they will be one of the priorities today. Uh, we also have the uh, inner city bypass. Uh, as I speak, there are two fire trucks down at the inner city bypass pumping water out of that uh, tunnel so that we can open that, that bypass as quickly as possible. Uh, electrical uh, connections continue at the pace that uh, Energex uh, has been setting as a target for themselves. So we hope to see most suburbs tonight reconnected and that uh, effectively the target they've set is that those suburbs that are not totally inundated uh, will be reconnected by the end of today. So you're going to see a lot of Energex crews out there on the roads as well. I might invite uh, Deputy Commissioner Ian Stewart to make some comments. There's been a couple of issues overnight that uh, might be of interest. There have been. Uh, thank you, Premier. Um, look, unfortunately overnight we had a, an offence uh, committed down around the mouth of the Brisbane River by three people uh, in a boat. Uh, police intercepted uh, these people while they were doing proactive uh, looting patrols um, and located two males and a female uh, with property in the boat which is suspected, obviously, of being stolen. As a result of their inquiries, uh, the two males and the female have all been charged. The two males have been charged with stealing by looting and, obviously, will go through the court process. Uh, this is very, very disturbing, but can I add that these people were located by the proactive patrols being undertaken by our water police. Uh, can I say that as the water recedes in all suburbs, we will have extra patrols out to ensure the safety of people's property and the safety of, of personnel throughout the uh, Greater Brisbane and Ipswich area, as we have done systematically in every other area of the state. Um, can I also uh, make a plea uh, and temper the enthusiasm for people to want to go out and volunteer to clean up? Please don't go unless you have a plan and you are registered and you have some idea of what you are going to do. One of the great difficulties we're going to have right across the southeast over this coming weekend is the road system and we need access, uh, urgent access for emergency personnel for the community uh, people themselves, the people who live in those areas. And I would ask that if people are going to volunteer, and I hope that they do, that they certainly uh, make sure that they are registered with the appropriate groups and that they know exactly where they're going to and the tasks that they'll be carrying out. 
people must remember that in many of these areas, particularly the Lockyer Valley, um, services are just virtually non-existent in terms of things, simple things like the, uh, being able to obtain uh, water, um, toilet facilities, all those sorts of issues uh, have been destroyed in the last few days. So uh, people need to understand that uh, unless they've got a plan, unless they really know what they are going to do, they should avoid those areas. Um, thank you, Premier. Thank you. Uh, sorry, can I just make one other comment, and that is uh, to uh, thank the Australian Defence Force, who are now number 600 across Queensland, uh, helping us in this event. And I understand that there will be further uh, Defence Force personnel coming into Brisbane and Ipswich today to be part of the recovery effort. Uh, those 600 are currently working in a number of fronts. They're doing resupply efforts. Uh, we have resupply by the Army of food and essentials into Bundaberg and Charleville in the last 24 hours. They are on standby to assist, if necessary, in any event that might arise in Gundawindi. Uh, they will also be out, as I said, uh, in Ipswich uh, and Brisbane uh, over, the, uh, over the next 24 hours. So uh, the efforts of all of our emergency personnel and all the volunteers out there and all the uh, staff and resources of our local councils will be supplemented uh, by ADF personnel, and I'm very pleased uh, to see that occurring. Premier, you mentioned Mongol before. Some residents there are upset today, saying they were forgotten for four days. Did they slip through the net a bit? Well, I think we need to remember that there are some people uh, in our city, uh, such as those in Mogul, but in other suburbs as well, who have been uh, isolated either because their electricity has been cut off. So while some of us have been glued or some people have been glued to their TVs and watching what is happening and understanding it, others have uh, not had power connected and have been relying where possible on radio or talking to their neighbours. So that, I think, has made people feel very isolated and I understand that. In the case of people in the Mogul area, uh, when these sorts of events happen, they also get cut off by road. I want to assure the people in the Mogul area, uh, in no way have they been forgotten, uh, but because they are so cut off, it's not easy to uh, communicate with them. In fact, they were the subject yesterday of significant planning by the ADF uh, throughout the day to get supplies into them, and that's how they supplied eight pallets of food uh, with the heavy-duty vehicles overnight. So uh, we have a supply team working on uh, getting all of this out across some very difficult terrain in the southeast and into major cities across the rest of Queensland, and Mogul is certainly on that radar. But I do understand what it's like uh, to be in a home with no electricity for three or four days, cut off by road. Uh, it must have been, I think, quite a frightening experience for many people in those suburbs like Mount Crosby and Karana Downs. Can I also say that, as I said earlier, we're trying to priori we're prioritising the uh, uh, road and electric electrical supply into those suburbs. Uh, but I think many people in that area, they're living on acreage, they understand if they've lived there for a long time that uh, those creeks do cut them off and it won't be an instant uh, fix, but we're working and they are priority. You mentioned about volunteers <coughs> with um, helping the clean-up effort. The Brisbane Mayor is proactively seeking people to come and help, telling them to turn up with their wellies. Do you want that to be a bit more regimented? No, no, we're very happy for, to see people working with the Brisbane City Council through the Lord Mayor's efforts. Uh, that's precisely what the Deputy Commissioner is saying. If you want to volunteer, get onto one of these programs, you know, register with uh, the Lord Mayor's program and do what, uh, what you can. What we're a little concerned about is we've heard reports of uh, some groups getting together and saying they're going to head to the Lockyer Valley this weekend to go and help. And I think they're very well motivated, and I applaud them for their sentiments, but they are going into an area that is still a serious search and rescue, an area, as the Deputy Commissioner said, with almost no services, uh, and people just turning up uh, you know, with three or four uh, truckloads of people could actually be, uh, a, a, be a hindrance, not a help. So... Uh, it's better if you want to go into the Lockyer Valley that you uh, make sure, maybe wait a couple of days, <coughs> maybe it's next weekend that you can do that rather than this weekend and there will be, uh, certainly I, th I know the local council there is looking at how they can coordinate that. So here in Brisbane and Ipswich, uh, people are encouraged to get out in your wellies, muck, get out the buckets, get out the mops and brooms, uh, go and help your next door neighbours, no problem with that. Uh, and I know that both in Ipswich and Brisbane, the, the city councils are coordinating that and they're doing a great job and we don't want to discourage that. But before you go heading off into places like the Lockyer Valley, please just think a little bit about what you're going into. And uh, I, I really discourage people, unless they're part of a... 
uh, organised group that is uh, working with the local council not to be in there. How concerned are you about the King Taiju next week? In the absence of any further rain uh, and any her further heavy inflows to the Wyvernhoe system, uh, the king tide is not a problem. Uh, our river system has king tides, uh, you know, it has always had king tides, and uh, most people would sleep through the night and not know about them. I'm just, I know that people are aware that we have this king tide coming, and I want to reassure them that the release strategy out of the Wyvernhoe Dam is taking account of that tide next Friday, and that's one of the reasons why we'll continue to have some heavy releases in the next five to six days so that we're prepared for that king tide and as I said, most people aren't even going to notice it uh, because of that management strategy. Well, what about, uh, have you had any more further advice about this cyclone that's um, hovering up north? Uh, yes, the Bureau advises that uh, the uh, tropical low, uh, very low-level cyclone that's heading, that has been in the Coral Sea uh, now appears to be heading north, uh, which is a very good thing. It's heading further away from us now. Again, we'll keep watching it, but uh, it, maybe our luck's about to change. <laughs> what, portion, what portion of the CBD is operational today or will be over the next couple of days? Uh, look, trying to calculate quickly, I, uh, there are ten buildings that remain without power. Uh, or are not connected. There are some buildings that have power where the building owners are uh, being very cautious and saying, don't come in today, wait till Monday. So I think, frankly, we, will, we are unlikely to see the CBD fully operational, looking uh, like it's an active inner city area until early next week. Uh, I do think there'll be some people, some businesses and some uh, large companies whose workers and staff are affected by the floods and who won't be coming to work, so they may be... Uh, it might be still a quieter city for a while because uh, many people who would otherwise be at work simply can't be. So those issues I think we'll notice a bit uh, over the coming week. But we are working very hard. The reason we're working so hard to get the CBD operational is our ability to manage this event right across Queensland is critical that uh, the major business of government, such as the health department, are fully located back where they have all of their resources. So... Uh, that's the only reason that the CBD is a, such an, yeah, an issue. The head offices of big employers and companies that have been uh, devastated across Queensland, the head offices of government departments that are critical to the recovery are located there, and that means we have to put some priority on it. But that does not in any way detract from the massive effort that we are making across regional Queensland. Uh, in every one of the towns that have been affected, we are developing uh, re rebuilding and recovery plans, and we haven't taken one step back from that effort while we've been focusing on this response. Just what questions do you have at the moment? Um, I guess in terms of these rising waters, in terms of communities being cut off the electricity issue, what health concerns are developing and what's Queensland not doing to after any natural disaster, uh, public health becomes uh, a very significant issue. Uh, there are large-scale health concerns such as the quality of drinking water that uh, is a first priority. That's why we're trucking fresh water into the Lockyer Valley. It's why uh, we are doing some very uh, fine calculations as we speak about the water supply and the water balance in Brisbane and Ipswich given the treatment plant issues at Mount Crosby. But there's also a whole lot of smaller concerns, and as everybody gets out into the clean-up, uh, one thing that Queensland Health tells me, and uh, apparently was quite a big issue in 1974, people tend to put on their thongs and stubbies and go out, and under these waters, you might only be in ankle-deep water in a house, but uh, there's broken glass, there's uh, metal objects, and people start to get cuts, and of course that water is toxic. So if you get cuts in that kind of toxic, contaminated water, very serious infections, particularly uh, in children or older people. So uh, please, I, if I take, take Campbell Newman's point, have your gumboots on. Uh, you really do need to make this... These sounds like small issues, but these sorts of infections can become, uh, particularly in some in older people, can become life-threatening. So those are the sorts of issues that we all have to be very mindful of. Uh, and I would also encourage you, uh, take your mosquito repellent with you. Uh, yeah. There are mosquitoes. Just you know, When you fly over this, it's mosquito central out there. So uh, make sure that you uh, have your repellent. How many people are still um, in terms of there has been no difference in the number of deceased at this time and I, I believe that we're around the 55 mark. Uh, it's come down again from uh, yesterday and I would encourage people, if they have reported people missing and they have found them themselves and confirmed that, please get back to the authorities so that we don't waste precious time of our investigators and we have a large number of investigators working on this uh, so we don't waste their precious time. 
just in regards to looting, what are water police doing to stop people stealing boats and that kind of thing as well? Uh, certainly we have those proactive uh, both land and waterborne uh, patrols uh, in the Brisbane area and in the Bay, uh, Bay Island areas uh, during this time. Uh, one of the challenges that we have is the huge amount of debris that is in the water at the moment and the safe operation of our vessels. So we're taking that very much into consideration. The, the case last night, was it, house, was it household goods or what sort of... No, my understanding is that it will be alleged that the, the goods are from other moored vessels. Can we clarify, last night you said um, about 30,000 homes could be out without electricity for some time. Is that days? Is that Monday? Oh, no, in some cases, these are houses, as I said, that have been inundated right up to their rooftops. Uh, that could be... It could be weeks. Uh, these may, ha may be houses that... In some cases, some of these houses will have to be de demolished so that they won't be getting supply back on until there's a new house there. So a anything from several days. Uh, the process, and we'll be putting information out to people, but the process is clean up then the, the whole house has to be certified by an electrician as safe before we can supply back to a house that's had serious inundation. That just puts a few more days into the process, but these are circumstances where people are not going to be wanting to move back in uh, until they've seen, as I said, not only everything cleaned up, but until they've got a fridge, until they've got uh, you know those sorts of appliances back in there. So uh, the electrical supply, I think, what will, will match when people are actually able to move in. You were warning against people going to the Lockyer Valley, people with good hearts wanting to do mm -hmm. some good, but people may also go just to sightsee. Are you directly telling people to stay away? Uh, in terms of sightseers, yes. Uh, we've discouraged that um, over, the, over the last few days in particular. Uh, we would ask people not to simply go out there looking at the, uh, the damage, um, because there is a lot of very, very upset and fragile people in those communities. Uh, we don't want any issues erupting um, because people simply want to go and have a look. Thank have you. you heard that Thanks the last bit of walkway has just broken off and it's now floating down the river? You guys heard that? Uh, I beg your pardon? Have you heard that the last bit of the walkway has just broken off and it's floating down the river? I, no, haven't, I haven't, but if it's just happened, I've been here, so yeah, no, <laughs> we'll certainly Thanks. update you on we'll that. We'll update you. some clarification on the flood appeal. The bulk of that money was raised before we hit Brisbane. Yep. Will Brisbane people be eligible for that money, or will that be more free? No, this, this appeal is for everybody who's been flood affected and uh, obviously the challenge for that appeal now is uh, much greater than it was last Sunday night when we had a very successful telethon. Uh, uh, we are still advertising and calling on Australians. We know that you've dug deep, uh, given what's happened here in the last week to so many thousands of people. I think it's time to dig a little deeper. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thanks. To grant them, is that how you get it? Uh, no. Can you tell us how she's getting to Grantham?